So if you've been following the news in the TTRPG space, you've probably at least heard the term Orc License. If you don't know, Paizo is creating their own open gaming license because reasons. So in celebration of that, I've got another teamwork built for you. Let's dive in. Today we're building the Orc Dragon Tamer Champion, and we're going with the Redeemer cause. This will give us the Glimpse of Redemption Champion's reaction. When an enemy damages your ally and both are within 15 feet of you, you force the enemy to make a choice. Either do no damage or do less damage and become enfeebled too until the end of its next turn. Then, since legal document isn't a valid ancestry, we're going Orc. And we're taking the Battle Ready Orc Heritage. This gives us training in the Intimidation skill and the Intimidating Glare skill feat. Thus, we can intimidate foes that don't understand our language without taking a minus four to the check. The background for this build is going to be Relentless Dedication. This will give us the Warfare Lore skill and more importantly, the Canny Acumen General feat. And for that feat, since we're playing a champion, we want to pick Reflex Saves. So we're now expert in all saving throws at level 1. And later, we will get Master in Reflex Saves. The starting stats for this build should be Strength 18, Dexterity 10, Constitution 16, Intelligence 10, Wisdom 12, and Charisma 12. Okay, for level 1, we are playing a Marshal, so we do get a class feat here. And we're going to go with Weight of Guilt. When you use Glimpse of Redemption and the foe decides to do damage, you can make the foe stupefied to rather than enfeebled to. This lasts for the same duration as the enfeebled condition would on a normal Glimpse of Redemption. Then for our Ancestry feat, we're going to be taking Beast Trainer. So we become trained in nature and gain the Train Animal Skill feat. This allows us to teach wild animals certain commands. thus allowing us to possibly take those companions with us. I'll talk about why we're really taking this later on in this video. Before we move on to level 2, I want to talk about our deity. Champions do have to pick a deity after all. It doesn't really matter what deity you pick here as long as two things are true. Number one, the deity allows neutral good followers. And secondly, it has access to the duty domain. Because at level 2, we're going to be taking deity's domain for the duty domain. This will give us the Oath Keeper's Insignia Focus Spell. As a free action, when you make a promise or deal, you can create a bracelet, flower, or some other type of trinket. If within the next hour, you complete the terms of the deal or promise you made, the trinket disappears with a pleasant chime. If you break the promise or deal during the duration, then it disappears with a dissonant crash instead. Heightening this spell increases the duration to up to one year. Thus, anyone that is around you when you break a promise will immediately know that you broke a promise. This is more of an out of combat thing, but don't worry, we are going to be taking the other spell from the duty domain as well. And of course, for our free archetype, we're going to be taking the Martial Dedication. This build is about working together with your allies, not debuffing enemies. Therefore, one of our skills at first level should be Diplomacy, because now we'll get Expert in it. We'll also gain a 10-foot Emanation Marshal's Aura that grants a plus one status bonus on saves against fear to all allies that are within it, thus lowering the chance that allies can gain the Frightened Condition. At level 3, we do get our Divine Ally, and seeing as how we want to be a Dragon Tamer Champion, we're going to choose the Steed Ally. Thus, we'll gain a steed. This functions exactly like an animal companion, except it can only be a creature with the mount special ability. We'll talk more about that when we get to the teamwork reports. And of course, we also get our first general feat. We already have Kenny Acumen for our reflex saves, so the general feats we want to take are Toughness, Die Hard, Fleet, Untrained Improvisation, and Incredible Initiative. Toughness and die hard so we don't die. Fleet for more speed. Untrained improvisation because our intelligence isn't high and we won't get many skills as a champion. And incredible initiative so we have a chance of getting right in there and protecting our allies. 
Then for level four, it's time to take Aura of Courage. So whenever we become frightened, we reduce the condition by one. Also, at the end of our turn, when we would reduce our frightened condition by one, we also reduce the frightened condition by one for all allies in a 15 foot burst. Thus it's going to be very hard for the frightened condition to stick around for any significant amount of time. Then we'll pick up Inspiring Martial Stance. This is another reason why we need diplomacy. We can go into this stance by spending one action, but we must make a diplomacy check to do so. On a critical success, our Marshal's Aura increases to a 20-foot emanation. It also grants all allies in our Marshal's Aura a plus one status bonus to attack rolls and saves against mental effects. On a success, we get the same effects as a critical success, except our Marshal's Aura does not increase. On a failure, we fail to enter the stance. On a critical failure, we fail to enter the stance and can't use this action again for one minute. And then, our ancestry feat at level 5 is going to be Orc Ferocity. So once per day, when we would be reduced to 0 hit points but not killed, we can use a reaction to remain at 1 hit points. Our wounded condition does still increase by 1, even as a champion with our crazy AC. We're still going to get hit. That's all there is to it. So being able to stay up at one hit point is going to help a lot. For today's teamwork report, I want to start with Beast Trainer. Why do we need that? Well, at higher levels, we're going to want to take a Riding Drake Animal Companion. Unfortunately, we can't right now. We're probably stuck with a horse. But once we get it, that Riding Drake will have a breath weapon, be trained in intimidation, and be able to do everything that an Animal Companion can do. Increase our speed, flank with us and our allies, things like that. And obviously we're going to be taking feats that will increase that Riding Drake's stats. And what it can do. And it's all thanks to Divine Ally and Beast Trainer. The strategy is basically just like any other Redeemer Champion. Get right up in there, protect our allies, especially Spellcasters and Archers. Use Glimpse of Redemption when allies take damage. And we will want to use a shield here even though we don't have shield ally. Because we still have shield block and we'll want to reduce damage on ourselves. So we can stay up and protect our allies for longer. We also want to be near our allies for that glimpse of redemption and for our marshal's aura. As allies only get that bonus if we are near them. Okay, really quickly, at level 6 it's time for loyal warhorse for a better mount. Then rallying charge so we can move and attack as well as give our allies some temporary hit points if we hit. At level 8 it's advanced deities domain for the dutiful challenge focus spell. This gives some penalties to both you and the opponent for attacking anyone other than each other. Then to battle allows one ally within our marshal's aura to either stride or strike depending on how many actions we use on this. At level 9, Dragon Grip allows us to finally get our Riding Drake mounts. Then Imposing Destrier will make our new Drake stronger and allow us to use an action even if we don't command it. And then we'll take our second dedication, the Bard Dedication. This will give us some Bard cantrips like Forbidding Ward. Then Lasting Doubt will make the Enfeebled and Stupefied conditions from our Glimpse of Redemption last longer. And Song of Strength will help our allies with their athletics actions. At level 13, Ferocious Beasts will give our Drake our Orc Ferocity reaction. Then Divine Reflexes will let us use Shield Block and our Champion's reaction in the same turn. And Basic Bard Spellcasting will give us even more occult spells to work with. With Auspicious Mount, our Drake becomes a Specialized Animal Companion. And we want to pick up the Racer Specialization so we can move even faster while mounted. And Expert Bard Spellcasting will give us even more occult spells to work with. Our last Ancestry feat for this build is going to be Incredible Ferocity, allowing us to use Orc Ferocity once per hour instead of once per day. Then we'll take Rejuvenating Touch. When we use Lay on Hands on someone, that creature gains temporary hit points every round. But it stops if the creature becomes unconscious. Moving on to the free archetype, we'll take a company. As a reaction, if an ally within 30 feet casts a spell, 
you can make a performance check with a very high DC for your level. You must also spend a focus point for a spell slot depending on what type of spell your ally casts. If you succeed on the performance check, then that ally's spell doesn't cost a focus point or a spell slot. At level 20, Celestial Mount will make our Drake even stronger and allow it to fly, meaning we can now attack enemies even in the air. And our last feat for this build is going to be Coordinated Charge. For two actions, we can stride up to our speed and make a melee strike. And if the strike hits and damages an enemy, then every ally within 60 feet who saw you hit that enemy can use a reaction in order to stride. But if they use that reaction, they must end their movement closer to the enemy you hit. So, for today's second teamwork report, the strategy is pretty much the same. Get right up in there and protect allies. Use your drake to help allies and yourself flank, or ride it to get right into combat. The only difference now is that we have spells. We're going to want to choose spells that buff allies and debuff enemies, like fear and bless. We'll also want to use rejuvenating touch as much as we need to, especially on allies. Our mount is also way tougher and can fly now. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Pathfinder 2e teamwork content. If you're having trouble coming up with what to do on your third action, this is the video for you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, teamwork is vital.